I'm Draco Self-Important, and I think you should listen to me. I also think you should like and subscribe. Please subscribe. Please. Most of you are not. Like, even more than the normal YouTube, most of you are not. And some of you are coming back. So, like, come on, man. Like, how, you have to, like, seek it out. I don't know. Um, but it's much appreciated if you do. Um, so I just uploaded and like, as it was finishing processing, I got a big old long comment from someone that I had addressed in the one from yesterday. I digress. Um, so, uh, I want to talk about it cause I'm on a roll. Um, so this is, uh, JDS8132, uh, thanked me for taking the time. You're welcome. Uh, I, I appreciate you taking the time to type all this shit. This seems way more labor intensive to me than rambling at the camera, but you know, that's just me. Um, <clears throat> I now understand some of your points way better. And I agree that there is an effect where the longer you interact with someone, the more you get used to their face or even begin to see them as more attractive than before. But that's just never happened to me because I don't have any female friends, so there isn't much opportunity to learn about anyone's personality. And I feel like if I tried to make female friends, it would just come off as awkward because of my looks. If I try to strike up a conversation, she will just think I'm trying to hit on her and be a creep, and my looks aren't good enough to hit on someone anyways, so it would probably just end an absolute disaster. She'll tell everyone I'm a loser, and then I'll get excluded from college society. Yeah, I do catastrophize, but to my mind, with good reason, uh, taking that I've tried to get into conversations with other guys, and that already failed miserably most of the times. Okay, so let's just pause there before we... All right. <clears throat> You have to stop with the black and white thinking, right? Um, you, if you want to have friends, you're going to have to talk to other humans and you're going to have to be okay with the fact that some of them are not going to like you and also that some of them are going to misinterpret your intentions, right? People misinterpret my intentions up in here on this here internet all the time. It definitely happens in person, especially if it's someone who does not know you or does not know you well, right? Um, you have to stop assuming what other people are thinking and assuming that even if the majority of people suck, that everyone does because you're putting it on people who don't, I'm sure, right? They're are if someone's just having a conversation with someone about like something pertinent right like if you're striking up a conversation you know where are you what are you talking about is it you asking someone in class about an assignment or some shit like that's perfectly reasonable. Um, you know, asking someone like if they know of fun things to do or if they, you know, like these are all reasonable things to do. Like if you start the conversation with, do you have a boyfriend, right? That's probably, she's going to assume that you're hitting on her. But if you're like, Hey, do you know about that paper? Or if like you're, I don't know. If you're hanging out at the same place, you make a comment about something that you're both looking at or something like, you know, if you're starting a conversation with like just randomly walking up and, you know, asking something personal about a stranger, then yeah, that does like, that feels like that's, there's, there's a, an agenda there. I don't know. Um, but y It's okay to be awkward. Most people are pretty fucking socially awkward. It's just most people don't like dwell on it like it's the worst part of them, I guess. Um, it's, you know, like it. Uh, my uh, training shift the other night, there were definitely points that I w it was very fucking awkward because I don't know this dude. He doesn't know me. Uh, you know, they, we've got client who knows him doesn't know me is like who the hell is the new guy you know um it's and so there were like weird pauses and you know but like 
I don't think that he thought that I, you know, like, and I don't like awkward is okay. Um, and if you're not talking to someone for the purposes of hitting on them and they assume that, then that's on them making an assumption. So like, you just have to be confident in your own actions and why you're doing what you're doing. Um, and just do it like this is <clears throat> this is the whole self-esteem of it all and i think that the self-esteem really just comes from realizing that you're a person who has value and you should like value yourself and you you know deserve to have like relationships and things um but like you have to put in your end of the work too you can't expect to just be serviced right um unless you're paying and then you're paying for a service and then buy them, you know. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to say that you're never going to be misinterpreted as being creepy when you're not trying to be creepy. I mean, I, you know, like sometimes you say shit that you think is cute and then it's like, Oh, that wasn't cute. Actually that, ooh. um, you know, like I'm a big fan of in situations where you are walking up to and talking to a stranger out of nowhere um and, you know i've said this before but i, I you know it's i think it's it, it bears repeating acknowledging that it's weird right my favorite phrase is not to be that guy but followed by whatever the hell weird interjection right like oh my god i can here's an example of a time i am this is years and years and years ago this was way pre-transition this was like i was doing drag at this point but that was as far as i had figured my shit out drag i was dressing like a boy on occasion uh, <laughs> oh my life is so silly anyway i'm in a pharmacy right and i'm standing there and like this is a tiny fucking pharmacy and I'm, you know, in the aisle that I'm looking at one side behind me is the, like, woman care shit. And I hear this woman, like, mumbling some shit out loud while looking at, like, the, the, the Vagisil monostat, like, you know, the, the, the yeasty beastie section, right? This is a point that I'm working in a clinic that is partially funded by Planned Parenthood. Um, and so part of it, it was the uh, adolescent clinic in the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. Um, so uh, STD, STI testing was like a huge portion of the services that we were providing because it was half Planned Parenthood and half just like pediatric primary care for adolescents. Um, so I... Uh, at that point was well versed in uh, the knowledge of like every STI and all of the current contraceptive methods and like, cause I had to counsel on the shit. It was as part of my job. Um, so yeah, I'm hearing her mumble and then I like, I recognize by what she is saying out loud to herself that the thing that she is about to buy is not the solution to her problem and that what she needs is some goddamn antibiotics um yeah public service announcement if it smells fishy you need antibiotics that's probably bv that's literally one of the things that they do to test is what's called a whiff test um yeast doesn't smell fishy it usually doesn't smell like much of anything. If anything, it's kind of sweet. Hi, hello, welcome to Vagina Talk. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but I was like, hey, um, not to be that guy, but like, this is what I do for a living. Um, so, you know, maybe um, hit, hit up a doctor because it sounds like you just need a quick course of antibiotics and you'll be on your way. Um, so like, you know, that definitely could have been very awkward. She could have been super fucking offended. I mean, granted, she's a lady who's talking about her vagina smells out loud in a CVS. So, you know, um, but 
you know, if anything, I took an awkward moment of my hearing this woman doing this and made it into a productive conversation. Maybe it was meant to be. Maybe she could sense. I don't know. I don't think I was wearing my ID or anything. And also when you're wearing children's hospital ID, that doesn't really give people the impression you know things about STDs. They don't usually think there's an adolescent clinic with, the, you know, they forget teenagers bang, basically. Um, and the hospital saw, um, because adolescents, they saw people up to like 22. There was literally a point that I saw one of my own doctors because I was 21 when I worked there and she, um, taught, um, like therapeutic self hypnosis. It's basically just meditation, but like really pointed, guided, specific. It, it helped me in, it was part of my eating disorder treatment and it actually helped a lot for me to learn to like refocus alice alice never comes to record hi baby oh see he's my my baldy cat he's my dumpster cat those spots are not gonna he he was he was burned we don't know if it was thermal or chemical but he's got some pretty severe scarring but he is a very happy boy and he never shows up and now vash is coming because i'm petting alice hi Oh, 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 it's, 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 oh, we got just all the cat content today. Oh, goodness. Okay. So anyway, let me get back to the comment. Um, I feel like even if I became a billionaire or take up like 50 hobbies, nothing makes up for not being attractive. Like many of my college friends don't have any hobbies other than tennis and work, and they easily found a girlfriend, which is because they are uh, facially at least average. Here's the thing, man. I think that it's probably more because they think of themselves as being attractive enough. And hello, Vash. Uh, they carry themselves in a way that makes them attractive more than, you know, the actual structure of their face. Um, also, I still think that work in a lot of situations is a fantastic place to make friends and, you know, depending on the work environment can be for dating, um, but definitely for friendships and shit. And here's the thing, man, like if you make friends, you can get integrated into friend groups, right? So like make friends with their, their friends, you know? Um, and then in groups of friends, there almost certainly are women. Like, if, you know, once we start like getting into the friends of friends of friends, you know what I mean? Like engaging in activities that require people to be in groups in order for the activity to go. Because then people that you know and that like you will uh, help to make the group go. And then Vash comes and chases Alice away. Oh, I think he saw something out the window. Um <clears throat> They're such good boys. Uh, da, 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 da. So, uh, like, the the hobbies of it all, the reason that I say hobbies twofold, so that you are fulfilled in your life on your own, right? So that you have something in your life that is satisfying, makes you happy, makes, you know gives you a way to spend time that is enjoyable and feels worthwhile to you, right? That is the most important part of hobby. You know, it's why so many of my hobbies are fucking solitary because I don't have a lot of social battery, um, but I like to feel like I'm doing and, you know, yeah. So um, the other part is finding hobbies that fulfill that first need, but that involve other people because that's how you meet other people and that's how you get in situations where those people are like by definition like forced to be around and interact with you in order to participate in the activity that you're participating in right and you know if you pick hobbies that you know do what you like obviously don't but you know if there's something that you think might be interesting that is predominantly like a, a woman thing you know, like, I don't know, cooking class, knitting, crochet, any of that sound fun. Making things is awesome. Being like, I made this hat. That could be really cool, right? Like, I don't, you know, I don't have the, the I don't think I, I, maybe. Um, 
but you know, just like as a suggestion, it's a thing that, that has been a trope on TV shows and movies and shit. The like guy takes ballet class to be surrounded by women. But like, if you're actually interested in shit like that, like, yeah, because then you're going into an environment where you're engaging in something that you are interested in for the sake of you doing something enriching with your life, because that's the way that you should approach it. Right. And in the process of that, there are other people involved and you talk to them and they get to know who you are and you get to know who they are. And then some of them might like you rinse, repeat, you know, the college thing at like it, you're in school. School is uh, like, <clears throat> you really genuinely cannot think that everyone hates everything about you and still give a shit what people think and expect to live a happy life. Because here's the thing. Some people are going to hate you no matter who the fuck you are. That's just the fucking way it is. Not everyone is going to like you. In fact, most people are going to not care about you at maximum right like there's a lot of people in the world and most of them don't give a shit that you or i exist and that's okay but if you go out into the world you it, it just people don't go do shit and the the, the apps are like a fucking crapshoot. Yeah, the the and I realized I didn't address it on the video I uploaded like minutes ago. Um, as far as the like, you know, women swiping yes on the um, the convicted offender because good picture because they didn't read the profile. Like once they actually got there and started talking to the dude, I don't know how far it would go, but like, yeah, dating apps are bullshit because all people do is look at the pictures. Nine times out of 10, they don't even read the fucking profile. That's not where we're at, gentlemen. Like you have to go out into the world so that people can see you as a fully formed human being, not a two-dimensional photograph that you probably took poorly. Hi, I love you all. You take mug shots of yourselves and try to present it as good. And I don't know why, and you should stop. Uh, and even if I magically got a girlfriend, I would probably not be the best partner she could find. I would need to go to therapy, which is a red flag. In the past, I've always been drawn to radical ideologies because they're the only thing that gives me some meaning and puts me in a place where I am with people who only care about what you think. And now I'm part of the incels, which should be... Uh, knockout criteria, and I don't have a lot of friends, which is also just bad. I also don't have a lot of money right now, but at least that is something I am working on, and that's not dependent on what other people think of my face, at least most of the time. Okay, so here's the thing. I think that everyone who has access to therapy should get it. I am fucking nuts, right? You are most likely, if you are someone who has, like, you know, mental health issues, and I, th this level of self-hatred comes from something, man. Like, I, I would guess, as someone with similar, you know, sentiments about myself in my past, like, reading this, like, yeah, we'll get there. Um, the therapy, knowing that you need to go to therapy, is the opposite of a red flag. Because most people who really need to go to therapy and that need is a problem in their relationships, it's because they either won't acknowledge it, don't believe it, won't do, you know what I'm saying? So being like, you know, therapy would probably be awesome, um, especially if you're able to accomplish that, that's that is the opposite of a red flag. If you tell a woman that you are in therapy just because you want to be a better person, green flag. Go, go, go. Like, I am not being the slightest bit sarcastic or hyperbolic. I absolutely mean that. Like, green flag. Please. Therapy. Green flag. Um, if you should be on meds, be on meds. Green flag. You have to understand that... Um, 
everyone else has like shit too. Like you have no idea how many people that you interact with on a day to day basis that take a handful of pills when they get up in the morning just so that they don't act like complete buffoons all day. Like, you know, so like I, you know, I, I, think that finding someone with similar life experience right or with an empathy for whatever the hell has happened to you that has done this shit to your brain i say this as a person with cptsd most of the shit that is wrong with my brain is directly because i was like repeatedly traumatized while my brain was forming it is what it is but that doesn't mean that i don't deserve to have good relationships and friendships and shit and knowing and like therapy is a green flag seriously most people could benefit from therapy no one is actually normal fucked up people just don't usually realize how fucked up they are you know like once you get to a certain level you just and people are not introspective and, you know, it, it sounds like you are, and that's a good place to start because then you can recognize your own shit. You just have to also recognize the things you can change and then do it. As far as the radical ideologies go, I literally describe myself as a radical leftist. If you are radical in things that make sense and in communities where women exist, that's probably okay. Like, you know, um, if you want to, to be radicalized about some shit, how about being radicalized about yourself, right? Why don't you lean real hard into the incel exit, friend? Become the example. This is apparently some pretty radical fucking ideology because I get told all goddamn day that it's total bullshit and a fantasy, which is, you know, also what you get told about, like, anarchy and communism and, you know, I, granted, I'm not going to get into the minutiae of that because I'm not as confident in my knowledge of those things. I'm pretty confident in my knowledge of interpersonal relationships. Um, and quite frankly, a lot of that is because of how fucked up I am, because I've had to observe people my whole life to not say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, whatever, and have some people blow up, you know, like I, yeah, my, my empathy is a trauma response. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, I don't know. Uh, da, da, da. Thank you for your time. I don't know if I can ever return to being a somewhat normal person. I feel like my life continues continues down spiraling. It just takes one convincing friend, ultra conservative Christian, Muslim nationalist, to come by and preach some higher purpose for me to fall for it and attach myself to some radical BS because the sheer amount of purposeless drift in my life in the short periods of time that I'm not. So I don't think that radical ideologies are necessarily bad. I know that people will tell you otherwise, but I am not most people. Um, I think that uh, I think that the mamby pamby centrist of uh, liberal America uh, and even right like it, it, there is no left and right in actual pra practiced elected politics. It, that's just um, but you know, so I'm not going to tell you to not be radical, but like, to what end and for what purpose and what things do you value and where do you know, you if you're going to be radical about something, it really should be something that you truly believe in. Like if you get swept up in um, anything that sounds remotely reasonable, just to, like you have this desperate need for community, but complete black and white thinking. And hello, hi, so do I. But also, um, you know, I've I've worked real hard on the black and white thinking, but I have my moments. You know, I, I have my my points that I like cannot see my way out of the hole, as it were. And as far as the down spiraling, dude, I you literally because I cannot and will not get into the details. But like, you know, I uh attempted to uh kiss myself as Hassan would say um horrifying divorce another breakup on top of that because my dumb ass tried to be poly I am not a person for whom that is a good plan um and then 
my brother relapsed into addiction and died. Um, I had, you know, all kinds of shit go on with the, the kids and the, the, like, things that happened outside of the home that affect, that, like, and, you know, I, it broke my mental health. I couldn't work. I've been, like, yeah, like, but that doesn't mean that y you can't turn it around at some point. And, like, it sounds like, you know, like, you're in school, like, you know, how is that going? Are you learning about some shit that you actually care about? Like, you know, because if you're dedicating your education to something that you think is valuable and meaningful and you like uh, build relationships with people who are getting that same education, that's where some of my like, you know, best friends come from. This college. So like, you know, like I was married when I, so I was not trying to date in college. So like, you know, um, and I was practically married the, the first go around cause I got my associate degree, like right out of high school and then worked for a few years before I finished my bachelor's. Um, but you know, so like I was not dating, but I definitely was making friends, you know, like, and it's, yeah, when you can just be like, hey, do you want to walk to the cafe? And the cafe is three feet away. And she was probably going to go there anyway. You know, like it's, you have like a really good advantage at this point, as far as being able to like meet people, you know, and you have things to talk to them about. I mean, I don't know, man. Get radical about this. Become the example. Like, I would... Like, what? Yeah. Radical is okay, and therapy is a green flag. Like, the, these these are, are my messages to you. It's just, you know, radicalized in uh, what way, you know? Like, it, how, how are we... How are we radicalized? Um, you know, because it, you don't m make moves by asking politely, you know, like the, the civil rights movement, if we're going to get like, that's pretty, pretty radical, actually, it was kind of a big deal, kind of real hard fight against the status quo. Like, yeah, radical can be very good if you're doing it for the right reasons, if you are radical for good, um, and if uh, people are dying about it, that's not good. Don't, don't, don't be, you know, the, the stereotype, right? Don't, don't be the, the, you know, uh, couldn't have interpersonal relationships, so got real violent and made it everybody else's problem. Like, that's not the kind of radical we need. We need radical in the other direction. We need people who are going to understand that they have value, understand that other people have value, and fight so that everyone can live a better life. Like, I don't, you know, I don't need you to, to like people to understand that they deserve to exist and to, you know, be reasonably content as long as they're not hurting anyone else. Like, you know? So, I don't know, man. It sounds like you are, like, a quarter of an inch away from getting it. And just, like, yeah. Just go live your life and think about who you are and the things about you that are good and lean into those things. And if you want to be radicalized, you know, be radicalized for fucking feminism. Yeah. Do you know what women love? Men who are genuine feminists. Like, if, if that is some shit that you actually believe and are not just putting on as a, you know, like... It, it, if you believe that women should have equal rights and that the patriarchy also hurts men because real feminists also understand that men are at a disadvantage in certain aspects of life, just like women are, because this shit is not like it, 
it's all just to have big rich daddies in power but they have to be daddies and uh, you have to control the uteruses and shit and it's yeah the 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 inceldom of it all is an effect of this shit like feminism is the answer so if that's and i am a pretty fucking radical feminist uh so if that's where we're at there are plenty of ways to get radical as fuck and to have that be totally, like, good and also attractive to other radical as fuck people. If you are a person, you know, like, find yourself a nice girl in therapy, man. <laughs> like, you know, find someone who's going to get your struggles because she might have similar struggles. Right? Like. Women are not out there, all of them being perfectly mentally healthy, uh, high self-esteem. Like, hello, in the video I posted earlier, talked about my, you know, 14-year-old uh, bitching about people calling her fat. She's definitely not fat. Like, I don't, you know, like, I, uh, yeah. Like, I wouldn't even say the kid's, like, chubby. Like, there's nothing about the child, like, j nope. But kids are assholes because kids are people with less filter than adults and if you go on the internet adults also have no filter people are just assholes you just have to sift through the assholes to to find you know as as i refer to my partner uh the diamond in a dumpster fire uh, i don't know man i have faith you can do this i have faith uh Questions, comments, concerns. Uh, I'm going to go hang out with that kid now. I love you. Be safe. Make good choices.